The next book I read is All That Man Is by David S. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the surname because I'm just going to butcher it. I really like this book. I'm going to start to say I really like this book. If you like One Day by who I cannot remember, then I feel like you will like this book. It's one of those books that's just about general life. It's really nice and I feel like after reading Eileen, this was the perfect next book to go on to because it's just it's just about life and all the little different things in life that make up life, our day-to-day routines that never really get written about because they're so mundane, they're not interesting, but this life is all the things that we have to do. So the book fo- each fo- chapter of the book focuses on a man, and so it's about seven different men, and these men are in different parts of Europe. The only thing about the book is I can't too, talk too much about all the different characters. I feel, like, I feel like it's one of those books, it's an easy read, and I feel like it's one of those books that by me talking about each individual chapter and each character, I would just give away. Not even give away, because there's not really much to give away, but it would ruin people actually having to read the book. It's such a chilled book, and it goes at such a good pace. Like, from what I remember, there's like a man who's sort of in real estate, there's two guys who were travelling, I think they were in Croatia, and they're staying in like some ladies' hostel, which tries to like make a move on him, that's all about word. Um, that's a bit of a spoiler alert. Um, it's just different guys, and the thing, what it does is it goes from youngest to oldest, so it's like taking guys at, at the, the sort of gappiest age of their lives, and the next stage, and the next stage, until it goes up to a man who's about 70, who is about to die, like, it's not like he's got chronic illness, or well, he might, but I don't know, but I mean, I think he's 70, 80, like, he's in that stage where obviously he knows, like, life is ending soon. It's just about looking back in terms of him, but for the other guys, but also looking forward, and just, you know, when you're in that middle point in your life. So it's very interesting, and yeah, it only focuses on men. Don't have a problem with that, still very interesting. I don't think the book is as powerful as One Day, because One Day is spectacular in its own right, but the book is really, really good. It's a really lovely read. I really enjoyed this book, I gave it a 3 out of 5, and I just think, like I said, after reading it after I need it, it was just a nice sort of book to read after. It was a good refresher and a good sort of palate cleanser and yeah I would recommend this book for someone that wants like an easy read um but not for someone that's looking for something really super exciting because it doesn't have that but it's still a really great book. The next book I read was His Bloody Project by Graham McRae Burnett. This was my favourite book and I this is why I'm happy that I read the shortlist because I managed to find a book that I never would have read otherwise and I loved it. I really liked this book. It just goes without saying I gave it a 5 out of 5. It was my favourite. It, it was just so good. I mean, when I read about the book, it did not sound interesting. I don't sort of mind reading thrillers or horrors or these sort of crime books, whatever. I don't really mind reading them. I dip into them every now and then, but usually not my preferred genre. But with this book, I can talk about what happened because there's no great mystery or surprise here. You know, like, you read the back of the book and you already know what happens. Like, but that's the thing with me, I'm the kind of person that you can spoil the film for me, like, I don't care if I know what happens in the end, I'm watching it to see what happens, to see how this all unfolds, and that is the same with this book. You already know that the main character, Roddy, has committed a murder, and he's in prison, you just don't know if he's going to be hanged, or if he stays alive, and you don't know why he did it, which is great, so all that mystery is gone. You don't have to sit there and wonder, does he kill the motherfucker? He kills him. Well, I did, like, but there's so much more to the story, and that's what's so good about this. So it reads like a true story, but it, it's not, but it's, I think that's what the fantastic bit about it is, it just seems so accurate. So to summarize what the book is actually about, it's about Roddy, who I think is about 16, he kills this guy who is, I guess, basically, this guy's a douche, and he sort of becomes like a sheriff or something, it's not called Sheriff, they have completely different names for it. But sort of ranking this, I got a bit confused with that. And again, I read this a very long time ago, so... So he kills him, and it's about why and how he did it. So it's set in the Scottish Highlands in a small village called Coldy. Whether or not that place exists, I do not know, but... I mean, that's not really that relevant. So in this book, Roddy commits a triple murder. He actually only intends on killing one person, but then... Yeah, you know, circumstances, you go in, there are witnesses, but you can't do with them. The story is basically how and why, and it goes through accounts from different people, so people give their different opinions of him, people give the backstory of how the sort of family feud started, 
you hear about his family life, his mum, like, had passed away, spoiler, his mum had passed away, um, his life at home with his dad, who just seems like a grumpy old bastard. You get to know Roddy, and I think you get to sympathise with him a lot more, and you just, like, I'm not saying I understand why he killed the man, like, you know, married is a bit far, but the book allows you to see how he got to the point that he got to. And this guy, I think he's 16, or they're about that age, so it's not like he's a fully-fledged adult. So, and I think the years of his life have been very tough, like, it's set in a time, like a very long time ago, I don't know what the time period is, but, you know, people are doing a lot of manual labour, growing things, like, it's a small village, they have to walk everywhere, like, it's not 21st century, there's no technology or anything like that. So life is pretty tough, and this new sheriff who has who seems to just really dislike his dad just makes life even tougher for them makes it really hard for them to sort of make money and grow their own food and things like that so you see where Roddy's coming from and you sort of learn about other things that happen that this guy has done with his family and it's just yeah you see how he got to where he got to basically the book is actually quite graphic and grim I wasn't expecting it but in the part of the killing when they talk about how it happened goodness me it is graphic but I also think it's a real talent to be able to write about things like that and allow the reader to imagine it. So I liked it and I didn't because I was cringing like, oh my god, that's awful. But at the same time, I was like, I can really imagine that. I thought this book was brilliant, like absolutely genius because it reads like a real book and then you've got the different accounts of people in the village um, and then You've got like a psychiatrist who is really interested in Roddy and the book also, you know, has Roddy's interactions with like females and things like that. It's all a mixed bag and I obviously would encourage anyone to read this. I think it was very, very enjoyable. I just don't know if I'm doing it justice. I'm like, I love it so much, but I'm like, how much justice am I doing in explaining it? But the book is excellent. So yes, like I said, I gave this book a 5 out of 5, and I thought it was great, and if there was one thing to take away from this video, go and read that book. The final book that I read was a set out by Paul Beatty. Just so you know, that's the book that won. Now, to be honest with you, I don't understand why. I feel like sometimes when there's a book that it does really well when you read it and you don't understand it, I feel like I've clearly missed the point here. So to be honest with you, I was just not a fan of this book in the beginning. I was reading the book, it was hella confusing in the beginning. I just hate books like that. Not even because it's new to you and you're like, okay, I don't understand, I need to find my feet with all the characters. No, this book was just confusing. I the, book, the book was so confusing to me that I felt it was like 3,000 different characters talking at the same time. I didn't know what was going on in the beginning. Like, I had no idea what I was supposed to be focusing on. I was just like, I don't like this book. So it took me a really long time to get into it and then finish it. And really, especially because I'm thinking, this is the winning book. So yeah, I did actually stop reading it for like two days, and then I picked it up again because I was like, well, I can't have done this whole thing and then not want to read the winning book. But yeah, so I picked it up again, gave it another chance, and the book in this point started talking about his childhood, and I just thought it was really interesting. His dad was basically a sociologist and basically experimented on his child. <laughs> um, I did find that bit actually quite interesting. Obviously, no one wants to grow up like that, like being used in an experiment, like. His dad was just trying out, trying out all sorts of magic on him, and I was just like, this is weird. So actually that bit allowed it to redeem itself in my eyes, because I found that quite interesting. So after that, I felt like the book sort of settled, and I began to understand what was going on. Even to this day, I couldn't tell you what the beginning of the book was about. I just didn't understand it. I was very confused. I actually began to understand the story, and I actually began to enjoy the story, but I still kind of thought what was the point in the story. It's basically about a small town called Dickens, which... Oh, I struggle to remember. It's set in America, but I struggle to remember what main city it's next to. Oh, okay, so I've actually decided to do a bit of reading because I thought actually my room is quite poor. Dickens is near California. So basically it's about Dickens and like a lot of black people live in that area. So it's very focused on race, but not really. But yeah, I guess I'm going to really struggle with talking about this book because overall I didn't understand. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I understood what it was about. I was completely baffled. Towards the end, I understood what was happening in the book, but overall, while the book existed, what the end game was, I don't know. There's a lot to do with, like, you know, people selling out, black people selling out, and just, I don't know, different paths that black people took in different lives, and 
life in the village. Um, this guy seems to actually do all right. I mean, he lives on this like massive farm, seems to grow loads of stuff for the village. But yeah, there was a lot of random stuff happening that I was just started listening. I don't know about this. I've never experienced this, and I don't know what is going on. I feel like I'm not doing the book any justice, but for me, honestly, I can't, I couldn't, I wouldn't even read it again to be able to review it properly because I just didn't, I just thought I didn't enjoy it, I just didn't think it was that great and I wouldn't read it again and I don't think I would actually recommend it to anyone unless I knew they specifically liked books like that. So yeah, I was very confused by this book because it starts off with this guy in the Supreme Court and then it starts talking about his childhood. Basically, I think what happened is he's sort of fighting for the rights for his town because his town gets like removed off the map. They just pretend that they, they don't exist anymore. So it's sort of his actions that lead to him being in court. And it's just basically him going back over his life. I mean, I can't, really can't say anymore. I, feel, I think from what I read about Paul Beatty's his sort of fame for this sort of book is sort of focused on like black culture. He basically tries to reinstate slavery and like segregated schools. Um, so that is what lands him in court. So that's why he's there in the beginning. But yeah, the bit in the beginning where he's in the court, I don't know, it just talks about him like smoking weed and I'm like, I don't know if he was just extremely high during this point and that's how the book is trying to reflect that. I gave this book a two out of five. If this review sounds confusing, it's because the book is confusing. Anyway, so that is the end of my review about the six books in the shortlist. I want to do a similar video for the 2017 one, um, but it's just taken me so long to film this one that I don't know when that will be. But I really wanted to film this because I made little notes about it and I really just wanted to start a channel and start talking about books because I love books. So I hope this video has been useful. Totally open to comments and suggestions below of how sort of I can structure this and make this better. Um, obviously this is my first video so I'm just going with the flow and doing whatever I feel is right. But yeah, that's the end of the video, so thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on any of these books if you've read them, and please like and comment, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!